So welcome back uh, again and today we will see the starting of cathode ray oscilloscope that is a major portion in your fifth module. So already uh, everybody know what is a CRO and everybody has used it perhaps in the third semester we had an electronic circuits lab where we had used CRO and in future also we may we will be using especially in control system power electronics every, everywhere a CRO comes as an application for electrical engineer. So we know unknowingly or knowingly we, we have used CRO and uh, we don't know what is happening inside although we have used CRO we don't know what is happening inside. So if you know what is happening inside and what is inside then you will appreciate more the CRO. So that is the thing I have to say in the beginning itself and what is a CRO? CRO is after all an instrument which is used to watch, to measure, analyze and even record electrical and electronic circuit electric circuits signals so signals can be from electrical circuits as well as electronic circuits and CROs are in fact very fast XY plotters XY plotters were another uh, device which was used earlier so it is a more or less a fast XY plotter so as we all know we have seen a point a stylus a point at the center of the CRO when we start so when we vary the knob of times per division you can see that the stylus moves gradually uh, from left to right but we don't see the stylus moving from right to left but uh, there are reasons for that and there are circuitry to avoid the avoid uh, actually they are moving but we are not seeing that because there is some circuit which masks that movement from right to left so we always move the movement from left to right always we see that in a CRO the stylus moves so that is actually a pointer or the stylus so that is a luminous spot so that stylus is seen when an electron is ejected from a gun or from a cathode which is heated so that electron is emitted from the cathode and they are accelerated using some technology and they are hitting on the luminous on the screen which has a phosphor coating we know what the quality of the phosphor that is it ensures phosphorescence so that is how we got to get a spot now the screen should be is a fluorescent screen and we, we can see that we can see it or we can move the stylus um, anywhere around that screen screen okay so we, we have seen that we can record we can watch we can measure analyze or even record everything every signal so what's a signal signal is after, after all is a function of time so always we take the signal as a function of time that is why for the x-axis we always take it as a time so x-axis is nothing but a time base so that is one thing we have to remember so and uh, and what sort of signals we can measure we can signal we can measure signals from dc to uh, perhaps nowadays modern CROs can measure up to 20 gigahertz it can measure frequent signals of frequencies up to 20 gigahertz and uh, modern uh, CROs are more powerful uh, they can uh, record uh, they can they, and many many nowadays many are uh, microprocessor based and controlled and uh, there are so many bus capabilities which follows IEEE 488 bus capabilities all those things are there you can read from the literature now we can the most important thing is that we have to un understand what are the different parts the integral parts just like a television television we know that the earlier television was the main major part for the picture too likewise the cathode ray oscilloscope has an integral part called cathode ray 2 that is called the crt so the integral part of a cro is a crt that is cathode ray 2 so what are the different parts involved inside a crt one is the electron gun assembly the next is deflection plate assembly then the other is the fluorescent screen then this entire setup is enclosed in an evacuated chamber and that evacuated chamber is called a chamber is made of glass and that is why it is called a glass envelope and of course you have base what is the purpose of base any instrument will have base where we have the connections so connections are made out from the base so we will see the, uh, the pictorial representation of a basic CRT so this is the uh, evacuated glass tube evacuated glass tube the whole thing and this is my screen where I have the phosphor coating so this is a luminous screen where we see the luminous spot so 
this is the base where we have the connections or the pins are originated from the base we can give the electrical connections here and after that we have a heater so heater the main purpose of the heater is to heat the cathode so what is the material of a cathode a cathode can be a tungsten filament inside placed inside a low pressure mercury cabin a, a low pressure mercury cabin if you place a tungsten electrode and if we heat the ele tungsten electrode it will surely emit electrons and to ensure more emission of electrons of, of, of obviously the barium oxide is coated on the tungsten electron uh, tungsten coil so in order to ensure frequent supply of electrons usually barium oxide is coated on the tungsten filament so what is the cathode cathode is actually it can be a low pressure mercury chamber which houses an, a tungsten filament which is coated with a barium oxide which ensures uh, more electron ejection so that is the cathode so when the cathode is heated it generates or it, it emits uh, electrons and next this cathode or the or the electrons emitted from the cathode has to hit with hit the phosphor screen over here with some velocity or it should be accelerated so what is the means of acceleration electrons are of course negative so get to for the electrons to get accelerated you have to provide huge positive potential so that is the next stage and before that we have a control grid so that is the control this is the control grid here this control grid these are all cylinders even though we are seeing a uh, cross-sectional view these are all cylinders this is a cylinder these are all cylinders so this is a control cylinder where this is a nickel cylinder and here we have a small hole at the center which has which is which is made of which has a cap which is surrounded by a cap steel cap and the the advantage of a nickel cylinder is that when eject, when electrons are ejected from the cathode the electrons will be scattered so you don't want a scattered you don't want scattered electrons so in order in order to make a fine trace of electron beam you always want to absorb the unwanted or scattered electrons so this electron nickel chamber will attract the scattered electrons and the fine tuned trace of the electron beam will be passed through this hole so this is coaxially so this hole is is made coaxially with the crp2 and next we have the pre accelerating anode 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 is a positive electrode so electrons are are, are attracted by this positive electrode and in between so this is a positive electrode this is called pre accelerating anode and we have another accelerating anode here which is again the positive same positive so if this is connected to plus 1500 volt this this accelerating anode is also connected to plus 1500 volt and in between these two anodes we have the focusing anode perhaps may, you may you might have seen a, a, a knob called focus so this focusing anode is for that and then what is the purpose of this control grid this control this control grid is which is made of nickel is actually connected to a negative bias so uh, the intensity of the electron or the or the beam will depend uh, depend upon the number of electrons emitted from the cathode so that that actually defines the intensity now when i vary the bi negative bias of this nickel cylinder or the grid i can vary the intensity so if i increase the negative bias you can sharpen the beam or more electrons will be absorbed or the intensity reduces and uh, if you if you reduce the negative uh, negative bias uh, the intensity increases so this grid also has a, a, has the purpose of variation of intensity perhaps, perhaps you might have seen the intensity knob also in the zero panel so this gives the intensity control and the focusing anode gives uh, the focus it will focus the beam okay now as i told that this is connected to plus 1500 volt and this is also connected to plus 1500 volt and this focusing anode is connected to a less positive voltage perhaps it is taken as plus uh, 500 volt and then after this acceleration of beam if this vertical deflection plates and uh, horizontal deflection plates are not present then these beams will certainly hit the center portion of the screen so if if this is allowed to hit the central portion of uh, the screen for a very long time you will see that the central portion of the phosphor screen will get burned that is called the burning of the screen uh, so that should be avoided and uh, and uh, you don't want to uh, want to see the electron beam always at the center of the screen so to to make out meaningful signals or to watch meaningful signals on a CRO you have to 
see the complete variation over the complete screen. For that, for helping that, you require two pairs of deflection plates. One is horizontal deflection plates, which allows the trace to move from left to right and from right to left, which we, you, you will not be seeing, but you will be seeing only the movement of uh, the electron beam from left to right. Of course, there is a movement from right to left, which is masked from the user. Now, that, that is actually the job of the, the horizontal deflection plate. And then there is another thing. So, that is a vertical deflection plate. That is, it will help the electron to move vertically, the space to move vertically. So, simultaneously, two motions are taking place. One is the horizontal motion and the other is the vertical motion. So, the stylus or the pointer will be making two motions simultaneously, horizontal as well as vertical motion. And one more thing. What is happening in a horizontal deflection plate? What is signal applied to the horizontal deflection plate? We will see that. I just I will make a statement now, but we will see that there is a signal called sawtooth waveform which is applied to the horizontal deflection plate. I will tell the reason for that in the next lecture, next or the, uh, or the lecture, lectures coming up. And the signal under investigation is applied to the vertical deflection plates. Now, what is the quality of the phosphor screen? The quality of the phosphor screen should be that it should, it should have adequate persistence. At least it should have the persistence of I or beyond that. At least it should have the persistence of I. Why that is required? See, if on the center of the screen there is a spot, you see a spot and quickly the next time you see a spot somewhere else and, and, and again in a very short, very, very short span of time again you see another spot somewhere else and if that keeps on moving keeps on changing if the pointer or the stylus or the motion takes place very fast then you may not make up a useful signal from that motion you cannot make any useful conclusion or you may not make out any signal from that motion so there should be persistence that then only then only you can make out a signal from the screen so in order to make out something meaningful from the screen the screen or the phosphor should have a quality that it should have adequate persistence at least the persistence of i then only you can make out something meaningful from the screen so this is actually the basic things and uh, basic things involved in a cro the integral part is a crt and we have the base where we have the connections we have the cathode which generates or emits electrons which is emitted when we heat the cathode then we have the grid which is made of nickel cylinder and this has the negative bias which control the intensity then we have two anodes which are positive potential. One is a pre accelerating anode, and the focusing anode is another anode which is both are connected to plus 1400 trail. And in between, we have a focusing anode where which is which is also positive but lesser positive. For example, it is plus 500 volt. And then, in order to make useful motion of a signal, we have two pairs of deflection plates the horizontal deflection plates and then the vertical deflection plates. And we have the screen. Okay. Now, now the how the focusing is achieved. So that is achieved by the electrostatic focusing. We'll see in in detail what is electrostatic focusing in tomorrow's class. But one thing I have to tell you that is that in, before going into the next lecture, we have you may have to go through the physics textbooks where you have to learn about what is an electric field what is an electric potential, what is an LQ potential surface and then the relations according to that, uh, all those things you have to remember and what is the direction of electric field, how an electro EQ potential surface is constructed, all those things you have to remember or revise or refresh and come. Then only you will understand what is an electrostatic focusing. Okay, so till then, we, uh, uh, I'll say goodbye and uh, we'll see uh, in the next class what is electrostatic focusing. Thank you.